welcome back to another week of Art Life. In this week's episode, I'm going to be talking a little bit about artist statements and art bios and all of that arty life admin that we all know we have to do with our practice and never really like doing. And I just kind of want to deconstruct the whole thing a little bit in this week's episode, kind of focusing on the value of how helping your audience understand and contextualise your work as an artist can help it reach more people and maybe kind of get the message of what you're doing and why you're doing it conveyed in a digestible way in a way that feels like it honours your practice but also is uh, is legible often I've had problems with artist statements where I overly embellish use pseudo intellectual language and make it far too complicated for anybody to understand what I'm doing so hopefully this episode will um, cast some light on this subject so anyone who has been following my Instagram, Jess Oliver Art, will know that I have been making a brand new series of paintings. Um, lots of lovely sort of atmosphere cloud studies. Do, do, do. Lots of lights. I mean, winter is almost over. It is nearly spring, thank heavens. Um, and so yeah, I have been focusing on this new way of painting with expressive marks, lots of gestures, lots of study on beauty and romanticism without being kitsch and overtly feminine. I, I often in London got slightly boxed in with landscape painting being overly beautiful. Ugh, beauty is a bit of a tricky word. It's like the sublime, it's a bit the sticky sublime. It's um, overly used, overly kind of referred to in art, like words like the bodily, phenomenology. In landscape painting, you kind of edge into these territories and then get stuck. So trying to keep my painting relevant without being um, kind of overly associated with uh, maybe kitsch commercial uh, territories of art. I wanted it to be relevant and not edgy, but I wanted it to feel fresh and not kind of uh, yeah, kitsch is the word. It's an awful word, but it is a word. Uh, so an artist statement and bio is a way of making sure that I was conveying what I was doing, my researches, my philosophy, theories that I was kind of engaging with, particularly in the territory of landscape, this kind of whole subject of light, yes, space, escapism, uh, my awareness of global warming and like this polluted atmosphere that we have was always very prevalent in the skyscape work. And the statement is how you get that across because you can't write over your paintings. You know, this should mean this. It's subjective. The whole thing about art is taste. Aesthetic changes constantly. What is fashionable changes constantly in art. So protecting yourself, I guess I think of it as like a bit of protection, a bit of armour. Send your artwork out into the world with a statement, a bio. It kind of gives it, it gives it kind of narrative. So it's not just a sort of a drift in the universe. It gives a way of, helping people understand what you're doing, um, which is always a good thing. We want people to understand what we're doing and love it as much as we do and hopefully be able to um, engage with it as a viewer, if not buying it, being influenced by it as another artist. I'm influenced by other artists' work all the time and really getting into their kind of artist statements and what they're doing, it inspires me. It helps me think, wow, I didn't know that. That's so interesting. I understand the work better now. It gives you a deeper understanding of the work. Um, I think looking at famous artist statements, I will add a few links at the comment section below of artist statements from famous artists that I found quite interesting. Uh, Klimt, Georgia O'Keeffe has a great one. I have one desire as a painter, it is to paint what I see as I see it in my own way. I think that's the procreative link, I'll send that. But it's just amazing how clearly her voice comes across in her statement and that's what you want to do. Your artist's voice is so important and as well you'll and while you're able, oh, I'm so excited. And while you're able to convey it, it also helps to have the words to just kind of give a support. It's a, it's a support that we need with our practice. So I was applying for exhibitions. The Royal Academy Summer Exhibition is coming up. The deadline I think was yesterday. So lastminute.com, you know, just sending statements, sending bios for residencies. It's always going to be a part of your practice or my practice and keeping these statements updated is necessary because we are evolving constantly as artists. I myself am actually doing a solo exhibition in June, which is very exciting. And I was like, gosh, I need to look at my statement. What's my bio saying? And I, it was actually like five years out of date. All the stuff I was referring to, while still 
kind of part of my practice, I wasn't actively thinking about anymore. So I wanted to go back to the drawing board, strip it all back, simplify it, make it easy to understand and kind of integrate when you're looking at the work. Um, I thought it might be good as well with the exhibition leading up to the next three, four months, talk about all the things we need to do as artists when we're preparing for an exhibition and not just statements and artist bios, making catalogues, securing sponsorship for exhibitions, private views, the nature of networking at an exhibition and its value to an art practice. As I know, a lot of us, me included, would just hermit ourselves away in our studios, never having to show work other than behind the sort of two dimensional screen of Instagram, randomly posting into the ether of Instagram stories. No, a solid exhibition is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be brave and I will bring you along for the whole journey starting next week. Um, so look forward to that. Um, but yes, first things first was the artist bio. Okay, so an artist bio needs to be concise. I'd say 200 words max. People, people don't have time to read massive essays about what, who you are and what you're doing. They wanna be able to read it, integrate it fast, understand it and look at the work because that's what they're there for. I usually just sort of skim read a bio. I, I'm mainly just interested in learning if there's anything I didn't know about an artist that might help me understand the work better. So the bio needs to be in the third person. So that's he, she, they. Um, it's very useful at the beginning on my about page on my website. I have the bio first. Jessica Oliver is an artist who focuses on the territory of landscape based in Suffolk, her education, la la la. So I, I make it so it's removed from me, which means I can be honest about what I'm doing and not shy, like, oh, I'm amazing. No, I wanna make it so it's professional and it's neutral. So always start with a bio, just being kind of clear about fact. Contextualize who you are, where you come from, if you've studied, if you're self-taught, give the viewer who's reading about your work an understanding of where you belong in the kind of massive art world. It's about orientating yourself with the bio. Simplicity is key overly flowery words which I am slightly guilty of um, they're like a minefield in the end I just start throwing words around like phenomenology and bod bodily and alchemical elemental and if anyone reads my statement it is full of words like this I need to strip that back but it's all relevant and I love these words so I do include them um, but just keeping it simple for the bio um, a little bit about your education uh, what is your desire as a painter. What your main mediums are, what your main inspiration is, it doesn't have to be complicated. You can get templates on the internet which just fill in the blanks. Like, I mainly use oil painting, my territory is landscape, my focus is on atmosphere and light. I, I keep it simple because I like the work to speak for itself, but I just acknowledge with maybe my education or the territories of romanticism, I'm aware of it. I know what I'm doing. I'm not ignoring the fact that my work is slightly reminiscent of Turner and Claude Lorraine at the moment. Like I, I love these 19th century romantics and I bring them into my practice and the bio just helps you acknowledge that, not ignore it. The statement on the other hand, the artist statement, is, it's the first person stuff and it's a lot harder to write because you're talking about my practice, I as an artist, um, my vision for my work is, what do, what in, sort of inspires me, my work is derived from. So the personal statement is essentially a shortcut. So somebody who knows nothing about your work could look at your work, read this sort of statement and understand what you're doing immediately. It, it is a shortcut, but that's helpful. Like it's helpful for an exhibition when everyone's there to just, you know, look at the art, absorb, have an experience with your work. I don't want to read an essay. Uh, so again, keep it quite short. It's about the how. How is it made? Like your approach to medium, colours, palettes. What's the themes? What's the subject you're dealing with? What drives you as an artist? Again, I am not an expert, but I think just being honest is really helpful. Not trying to complicate it to try and sound uh, like not pompous. What's the word? I guess it's intimidating. You're putting your artwork out there and it feels like you want to sound like the work is considered and clever and smart. Like, you know, I, I actually think I started off doing that particularly when I was sort of studying and now I've stripped it all back. I want my statement to sound like my voice. I want it to sound like, I love what I do, yes, but I'm not gonna say words like, 
I want, I try in my work. That's the that's kind of um, inactive words. I want to be punchy. I want you to hear my voice clearly. Um, I find my study of atmosphere, you know, I'm obsessed by it. I, the dreaminess, the escapism, the light, the luminosity. It's just what my passion is, but I, I want to convey it in a way which feels like it's a landscape to explore on the canvas as well as in sort of nature. So in looking at the work, you're feeling like you can go into the work, you can feel the whimsy of it, the desire for maybe a dreamlike state, something slightly other. This work is called Solitary. It was just me in the studio alone for weeks on end. I think this is week four or five of six where Rafe's been in Dubai and I'm alone in the studio. And I want it to convey a sense of insulation, but also introversion isn't a bad thing. And although it's kind of grey, there are moments of light, of yellow, of kind of softness. And that's just, this is all the kind of stuff I can say in my statement. And if you get it in the statement, you've almost said it, so you don't have to repeat yourselves constantly explaining who you are to the world. You can just be like, here's my statement, here's my catalogue. Get to know me through the words, which I took five hours to write, a hundred of these little words, um, <laughs> make it look easy. Basically, you're just giving yourself a helping hand when talking about your work in interviews or in magazines on YouTube like this. It's actually probably quite good practice for me. Um, maybe I should just write my statement after talking to you guys. So when you've got your statement and your bio, you can add to it like a kind of ever evolving thing. As you do new things for your CV, you can list them in the and incorporate them into the words. You can slightly change and tweak your kind of statement as your practice refines. If your territory and kind of critical thinking, your research goes in a strange direction, you can just blend it into the statement, which means you're always giving yourself a diary and an archive of your work and your journey, which I think is essential because in 20 years, I'm gonna look back on some of these paintings and I'm like, what was I doing again? What was I thinking? I know I was doing like landscape, but where was my head at? And the statement is a way to just really keep it clear and concise. The bio is more of a CV, but if you do need to add your bio and statements into CVs for residencies, competitions, prizes, it always helps. And I think having the kind of professional approach to yourself as an artist, be proud of what you're doing, own it. Like don't kind of be like, oh, it's all right. Oh, I feel a bit bad. No, you've got to own it. You've got to be like, my territory of focus is this. Critical to the work is this, this and this. I use this medium. You know, I studied here, which influenced me in this way, or I'm self-taught. And, you know, in, in this kind of approach to the bodily painting, the mark making, I'm finding it's all about this. I mean, I don't know what you do, but owning it and being proud of it, being confident in yourself, other people then think that they should be confident in you too. Often it is about how you present yourself. Um, I have a problem with being overly humble and it's probably why, I'm okay, getting out of breath, Rafe. It's probably why YouTube has been so good for me because I have been talking to you guys about my work um, and I feel braver about saying what I'm doing or do you like this or check this out and it's not going right but that doesn't matter it's a humbling experience but i think it's honest so i feel much more honest about my work now i think before art life i might have been very shy and kind of hiding a bit behind maybe behind the words themselves i was hiding behind my canvases sort of selling work quietly i i wasn't putting myself forward to galleries or collect like collectives uh private collections I was shy of the work, I was travelling a lot, it wasn't appropriate. I think now I've realised I want to have everything organised and I want to find my voice with my work in a new way and I think that's what it is to be a full-time painter. Never before have I been doing this full-time. I've always had work with galleries or curatorial jobs on the side, I've always been doing loads of other stuff, there's been heaps of momentum, chaos, it was really only in the last year with lockdown I decided to do just this full time. So the statement in the bio is me starting to emerge into the world again and bringing you along for the ride. Um, I'm not gonna hide behind fancy schmancy words like juxtapose and elemental. I mean, I love the word elemental, it's elemental painting. Um, but yes, I need to be more simple with how I talk about my work. It is just a love of light, a love of space, a love of, 
the paint itself, the way that I use mark making to make buoyant light clouds. Um, yes, maybe the motifs are slightly neoclassical. I'm using some kind of referencing to neoclassical structures. I'm interested in allegory and narrative in creating a whimsical space that you can get lost in. Um, yeah, I want the viewer to get lost and have a bit of escapism. Beauty is inherent in it, yes, but at the same time, I don't try and make something beautiful. I just, I love colour. I love how colour blends. And often beauty is just a side product of that. Um, oh, I should write this all in my personal statement, which I'm going to do now. Uh, so although this is a very quick episode, um, I thought it's an important one. And as we go on the journey of my first solo exhibition, my first art life exhibition, uh, there will be a lot to do, so I kind of need to get my head around that and all the things we need to do, catalogues, promotion, oh my god, sponsorship, corporate sponsorship, private views, lots of fun things to look forward to. Um, so I'm a bit hyper and I'm going to carry on, I uh, probably do a bit of painting, but I'm just going to go write this bio and stuff. So check out my website, jessoliver.co.uk and tell me what you think. If it's too flowery, let me know. If it's kind of clear and concise and helps you understand why you like my work, if you like it, or helps you understand the work itself a bit better, whether you like it or not, then it's a win. So I'm gonna go do some life admin. I will see you on Monday. Thank you for tuning in to Art Life. Um, and I will see you next week. Please follow me on at Jess Oliver Art. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video because I love your likes and subscribes and your comments. Please leave me some comments because all week I just check the comment section seeing if anyone wants to chat to me because I'm just in the studio alone and I really want someone to chat to about painting. So please do leave a comment if you feel inspired to. And thank you for everyone who's been tuning in for a few weeks and if you haven't seen some of the videos we do one a week we've been doing it for about a year now so there's definitely an opportunity for like a art life binge go make yourself a cup of hot chocolate and watch lots of art lives um or yeah okay i'll uh, i'll catch you next week guys i'm gonna go do my statement <laughs> bye Thank you.